Welcome back to the Lakeside Productions YouTube channel. In this series, I'm repairing a 1940 40-foot seaplane tender and converting it back into a liveaboard, which it was converted to after World War II. The boat is constructed of double diagonal mahogany hull planking and oak ribs. So Rio Link sent me over their Argus 4 Pro security camera and it's been really great just to use this on the boat, especially for monitoring the bilge pump in the engine room. It's been fantastic to be able to, to look in and check on that, make sure the pump's been pumping out any water that we get in there from that leak, especially at the stern. And uh, I've, I've been able to check in, in on that even when I'm away from the boat, so it gives me great confidence, able to sleep easy. And uh, yeah, it's just a, a great addition to have aboard the boat. So they sent me their Argus 4 Pro with the solar panel. It's a 4K UHD 180 degrees blind spot free camera. It has all day color vision. So the Argus 4 Pro saves two watt hours in its night vision mode, giving it 30% longer battery life and extending the standby time by 12 days. Compared to infrared battery powered products with similar functions under the same usage conditions. So the setup for both the camera and the solar panel is hassle free, it's super straightforward, just took me a couple of minutes. You've got a few different mounting options, you know, it comes with a strap and an option that you can actually mount it to a, a pole if needs be on your property. So you can also secure it with the base plate and two screws, which I've used. And you can see me, I mounted it to the jetty, super straightforward, screw in the two screws and then adjust the camera to where it needs be. It can look at it through the app itself and then I can get an idea where I want it framed up and then you just tighten the collar onto the base plate and your camera's in position. So once I connected my phone to the Argus 4 Pro, I could then open up the Reolink app and control the camera through the app itself. So the app itself with the camera has been super useful for being able to monitor the bilge pump and to make sure that's been working, especially if I've been away from the boat. So you can open up the app and I can even hear through the microphone on the camera that the pump is working away as it should be. So when you click the flashlight icon in the app, that will put on the spotlight on the camera. So it's great that I can light up the engine room, I can check the water level in detail, I can even zoom in on the camera in the app, which is great, so I can see all the fine details, I can really check that water level and make sure I'm happy with it, that it to check that the pump is working. So to the left of the flashlight icon, you can see the alarm icon, and I can press that to set that off now. I can also set it for the detection settings. So if I have it set to detection mode, the camera will record, and also the alarm will go off if it detects any motion. So if you had an intruder on your property, that alarm's gonna go off and it's gonna scare that person away. So if you select the cog icon, it'll open up the settings, and then you can fine tune all the different features that you have with the Argus 4 Pro. It also has a time-lapse feature here, which you can see, which I definitely will be using soon and including in the next episode. So that's something that you won't get with all security cameras, I'm sure. So I'd recommend the Argus 4 Pro to any boat owner really who wants to have that extra security over their boat, who especially wants to monitor any bilge pumps that you have in the bilge, you know, to make sure they're working, especially if you're out of town. You know, that's something that I always worry about if I'm away from the boat before I had this camera. So. So I want to thank the team over at Reolink for sponsoring this episode and sending me out their camera, the Argus 4 Pro, to test it. It's been a lot of fun and uh, it's definitely really going to be useful going forward with this boat. So if you want to get your hands on the Argus 4 Pro, click on the link in the description below. So getting stuck back into the boat work, we started here on the engine room, especially for the combing of the engine room cover. This needed to be all stripped out, it was rotten. A long time that this has been overdue, that this work needed to be done. 
Uh, I started by stripping off the sides of the engine cover along with, with the lifting eye. We made sure to get that out as well. So I skipped off early from the boat work to do some filming for the Rosa Finish Free tour boat and this is a tour boat on Loch Gill and on the river that people can go out on, it has a bar on there, it's really cool. So I'll also leave a link to the video I completed for them in the description below if you want to check that out. So once I cut the new oak beam to size, I used the hand plane to 
smooth out that gradient to make sure that the teak deck planks sit down flush on the curve of this beam. I also used electric plane to flat out the faces of this oak beam. The reason for this is because I don't have a planer thicknesser and this is the best way I could do it. So I used the electric plane and then the hand plane to finish. So I then used epoxy to seal this oak beam entirely. All the faces got a coat of epoxy. You'll be happy to hear that we have a plan in motion uh, to get a trailer or to fabricate up a trailer for the 40 foot seaplane tender. Stay tuned for that guys, hopefully in the next episode, if not, it'll be in a very, an episode very soon. And we have a plan to get the boat out of the water onto the hard so that we can repair the transom because we have found a lot of rot in the transom. It's only about halfway down. It's not right down to the below the water level. It needs to be repaired and it needs to be repaired on the hard. And it's amazing. My uncle Peter and a few of my uncles, my family were there 30 years ago. They repaired the transom on this boat and I have the pictures to show. So I'll actually put those pictures on screen. Yeah, it's three quarter inch plywood. It's two layers or two sheets of three quarter inch plywood that was used to fix the old transom. It's time to get the boat out in the hard and to get that done. That's right. Yeah, that one's done.
So at the port side of the stern, or here where I'm working on the gunnel, the replaced gunnel. So we actually got the gunnel replaced and I wasn't recording it. My camera had fallen into the water, as you've seen in the last, in the previous episode. So I had a replacement camera uh, that Kieran, my friend from college, gave me, which is fantastic. Thank you, Kieran. Uh, it allowed me to continue filming, but unfortunately at this time I wasn't able to film. So my father and I used both Sapelli timber, we had Atlanta Sapelli timber, and then also white oak, and we laminated the two of those together, and that gave us the, the right dimensions for our replacement gunnel. And as you'll see in the next gunnel on the starboard side, uh, we got a Sapelli plank for 90 euro, I believe, and we, we got a section off that, you know, we could cut it off from that, and then we still have lots of excess to use on different parts of the boat going forward. So we removed the lifting eye here as well, and this is only temporarily. We can always go back and put the lifting eyes back in place, and I want to do that because these are, you know, historically accurate. These are on the boat. They were back when she was built in 1940, so it's important to get them back on, especially because on one of these lifting eyes, it says her tonnage, it says the date of when she was built. Uh, so it would be great to get those installed again going forward in the future. So I just used some Douglas fir here to basically replicate the other piece, plank that was in it to replace the plank that was here in front that was also securing the lifting eye. Underneath this is like a few slabs of pure mahogany, you know, uh, the real deal before it was any of this sapelli, you know, it was the, the real mahogany that uh, was being harvested in, in the 40s. It's nice to just put that back in place, even if it's not, you know, structural or integral. Uh, but just to get it back in place so as well the deck planks or the deck plywood will then sit on that as well evenly.
So the gunnel on the starboard side was replaced some years ago with deal and this was a fatal mistake because you can see just how rotten it is and you know the paint just did not seal it, did not protect it and you know water found its way in there and I suppose as well like this entire section of the stern, the engine room, the deck, uh, covers and combing sections you know just didn't see it, were never sealed properly. So on the port side of the engine room combing, I replaced those deck planks with American cedar. And, you know, to be honest, the tongue and groove just made it too brittle. You know, the planks weren't taken At 15 mil, it just, you couldn't make it strong enough. And it cracked out. And no matter how much I'd sealed it, it you know, it just, water got its way in there. And my part as well, of not getting the jobs done quick enough, uh, it caused a lot of rot here. I should have really assessed this first and just prioritize this section. But uh, the fact that we now get the boat out of the water with a trailer, it would allow us to get a canopy over the boat, proper kind of structure, that then we can work under the dry, the boat will be on the hard, and won't have to worry about kind of trying to work on it awkwardly in the water with boats and all that kind of stuff. So we had to turn the boat around and moor it back up to the jetty so that we could properly work and assess this section. on that side. One to two sides then, or beam. What's happening with that one? It's going loose. Yeah, that's me here. So with the wide angle view of the real link camera, you can really get a sense of scale of the boat. Like 40 foot is no joke here. Like it's a big boat. And uh, yeah, it's, you know, with a bit of organization, we were able to turn that around with enough ropes. Uh, you know, not to let the wind catch it because we don't have any power. We've got no working engines on this boat, so we, we had to make it work, you know. Keep the arse away. Yeah. 
We went over to help my uncle Peter rig or put up his mast for his Tinkerbilt Mermaid sailboat. And uh, it's a lovely classic sailboat. So every year on Loch Gill here in Sligo, my aunt hosts a sailing regatta in aid of the Northwest Hospice Charity. So I didn't get any shots of the sailing with my camera as I was operating the safety boat, but my friend Christopher got some great aerial shots, so you can see them here. And uh, yeah, it was just a fantastic day. You know, we had a great turnout of boats and uh, we had a bit of wind, so it was great to see and everyone enjoyed it. So on the following day, on the Sunday, my uncle Peter had a talk in the Cliffney Community Hall on a part of Heritage Week on boat building and his career in boat building, you know, who he learned it from, the whole history of it traditionally. Uh, and it was just fantastic to, to hear about the background, the heritage, the history. And uh, that talk, I also filmed the whole thing. And I'll make sure to put the video link in the description below as soon as that is online. And you guys can come back and check it out if you're interested in that. So with that length of sapeti timber that we got, we replicated the old gunnel. So it's the same pretty much as the port side gunnel, same on the starboard side. And we cut out that rebate uh, to take the, well now actually it was replaced, the double diagonal mahogany was replaced with marine good timber, or maybe the 30 year gar super guarant oakum, the plywood, uh, which you know water got into because again, wasn't sealed 100% at the top. It was before I had even, started with buying epoxy and using epoxy. Uh, I just done it with regular wood glue or whatever. We're able to replicate the old gunnel, but this time in Sapelli timber. So that's all for this episode guys, I hope you enjoyed it. Please do leave a like and subscribe if you haven't subscribed already. I do have a PayPal and Patreon link in the description below if you feel like further supporting the project there. So thanks a million to all of you who have continued to support the channel in one way or another. As always guys, stay productive and have fun creating. I will see you all in the next episode.